Hi, in today's session, let us discuss about an important nerve of the posterior compartment of the forearm, which is the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve is also called as the dorsal interosseous nerve and it receives the fibers from C7 and C8 spinal nerves. So the root value is C7 and C8. This posterior interosseous nerve is not a separate nerve of the posterior compartment of the forearm. Rather than it is continuation of the deep branch of the radial nerve. So if you see the anatomy of the radial nerve in relation to that of the lateral epicondyle as well as cubital fossa, the radial nerve is anterior to that of the lateral epicondyle in the lower aspect of the arm. From there, the radial nerve enters into the cubital fossa. So over here, as you can see over here, in the cubital fossa, the radial nerve gives off two branches. One is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. The superficial branch of the radial nerve is absolutely cutaneous branch. It is not motor in nature, which means it does not give innervation to any of the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm. On the other hand, another branch is called as the deep branch. So deep branch is the one which continues as a posterior interosseous nerve after innervating and piercing the supinator muscle, which means once the deep branch of the radial nerve is formed in the cubital fossa, it gives off a small branch to the supinator. Then it passes between two heads of the supinator and enters into the posterior compartment of the forearm and the same course you can also see in this particular picture. Here also you can see this is the supinator muscle and the nerve is passing between the two heads of the supinator and enters into the posterior compartment of the forearm. So officially the deep branch of the radial nerve converts into the posterior interosseous nerve at the superior border of the supinator muscle. So this superior border of the supinator muscle, what you are seeing in this particular picture is called as supinator arch. This supinator arch is also called as arcade of frost. So at this particular anatomical point, officially the deep branch of the radial nerve continues as the posterior interosseous nerve which means the supinator is innervated by the deep branch of the radial nerve but not by the posterior interosseous nerve. Now, once it enters into the posterior compartment of the forearm, it runs in a facial plane between superficial as well as deep extensor muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm and finally reaches the interosseous membrane where it gives innervation to almost all the muscles of the radial as well as dorsal aspect of the forearm. So if you see overall muscles of the radial as well as dorsal aspect of the forearm, all the muscles are not innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve because for example if you see the muscles like brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus, both of these muscles are innervated by the direct branches coming from the radial nerve trunk itself. It is uh, not innervated by the deep branch of the radial nerve rather than the posterior interosseous nerve, which means brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and another muscle also which can be seen at the posterior aspect of the arm called as anconius. This anconius is also innervated by the radial nerve. And supinator is the only muscle which is innervated by the deep branch of the radial nerve. And superficial branch of the radial nerve is cutaneous, so it is not giving any of the muscular branches. And the posterior interosseous nerve is the chief nerve of the posterior compartment of the forearm because it gives majority of the muscles uh, innervation that is superficial group as well as deep extensor group. If you see the superficial extensor group of the posterior compartment of the forearm, examples like extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, all these muscles, four muscles comes under the superficial extensor compartment of the forearm innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve and the deep group includes supinator but supinator is not innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve rather than it is innervated by the deep branch of the radial nerve. So supinator and abductor pollicis longus is purely innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve and other muscles like uh, extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and extensor indices, all these four muscles that is deep group also innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve. 
After innervating the superficial as well as deep extensor muscles of the forearm, it finally ends as a pseudoganglion. And this pseudoganglion gives off fibers which gives innervation that is sensory innervation to the dorsal wrist capsule. And this is what is about uh, the course as well as branches of the posterior introsis nerve. And if you see the posterior introsis nerve in relation to that of the arteries, in the majority of its course, as you can see in this picture very clearly, that the posterior introsis nerve is related to the posterior introsis artery. So we have two arteries, one is the anterior introsis artery and another one is the posterior introsis artery. So both are arising from the common introsis artery and the common introsis artery in turn arises from the ulnar artery. So as you can see in this picture, that in the majority of its course, the posterior introsis nerve is related to the posterior introsis artery in the proximal two-thirds of the forearm but in the distal one-third of the forearm it is related to that of anterior introsis artery and this is what is about the posterior introsis nerve.